Hello and welcome to this next episode of Hangar 14. In this episode we'll give you guys an overview of the installation of the KFA Buffalo suspension system. Just a quick mention that the KFA Buffalo suspension system is now standard as of May 2021 in all KFA Explorer and Safari kits. Right, firstly I've made these videos over a couple of days and I was waiting for parts to be manufactured so I jumped around a little bit with my sequence. So just a quick mention of the correct sequence in which I would recommend that you assemble your landing gear system. The first would be the cabane. There's not a lot of work in the cabane, just the cleaning of the holes and so on. The second thing to be installed would be your legs. Uh, the legs have a little bit of work where you have to clean the bush housings and uh, just make sure the bushes are the correct length and so on. And then thirdly would be the installation of the uh, buffalo shocks. The shocks also have very little work on them, it's just locking the rod ends and also making the little bush fit. Uh, fourth would be the axle and brake plate installation onto the landing gear. <clears throat> this is a little bit more involved. The brake plate where the calipers fit onto needs a drilling of four holes, two 10 mm and two 8 mm holes. The brake plate is made from very hard steel, 4130 chromoly, and I would highly recommend that you take that to an engineering shop to be done. Then fifth would be the wheel and brake assembly. I get a lot of questions uh, about the installation of the tubeless system. So we've been concentrating a little bit more on how to install the O-rings and uh, seal the wheels properly and so on. Uh, firstly, you're going to be cleaning the inside of the housing where the brass bush will be sitting. The rear one will need a M12 uh, reamer. The front one is an M14, but I don't think you should go rushing out buying an M14 reamer. They're very expensive and you only have two uh, places on the aeroplane on the two main legs where you'll be using an M14 for the larger bush. So just use a drill bit for cleaning the inside here. Just be careful not to uh, move the drill bit around. Do it as straight as possible. Only run it once in and out and then uh, work the bush on the inside and uh, rather use sandpaper and I've got a 600 grid here and then uh, clean the bush a little bit until it will slide in nicely. Always remember that the bush should be longer than the actual housing. The reason for that is we would like the tabs to be squashing against the bush and that the whole leg or whatever control system you were uh, working with is moving around the brass and not the brass moving around the bolt. So please make sure that these are nice uh, and tight fitting but still loose enough to move freely. Before you install them also remember to lubricate them. For this purpose we, you can use something simple like ACF 50. You can also lightly grease them or you can use a little bit of a thicker oil like a gear oil uh, would be perfect for, for lubricating this. And uh, from here we'll move to the actual installation. We've measured these distances, we've cut the bolts the right length, um, our bushes are longer than the actual bush housing, we've lubricated them and now we're just going to install them. So the rear one is an M8 that goes in, so I'm just going to use some, some uh, punches for locating pins, it just makes it a bit easier. So the punch is just holding it in place while I get the rear one to be in the right place. There we go. That was much smoother than anticipated. Go. 
and this is where the persuasion comes in just tap it through and that's it now we'll just install the washer and the, uh, the nut and we're done So before we start the um, preparation of the bushes, we first make sure that they fit. The longer ones, uh, they're 25 millimeter, they fit on the top of the cabane. Just make sure they go in there. If they are not fitting nicely, just file them down a little bit. Also run a drill through the inside and just clean and deburr it. As I said in the beginning, we're going to set up our own workshop to simulate what you guys will have, the typical tools you'll have at your house or at your workshop. So in this case we don't have a lathe here, so this is a simple solution. These bushes are the bushes that have to go in the, the rod ends of the uh, buffalo suspension. So these will fit in there. So as you can see, it's not fitting very nicely. The, the hole is 12 millimeter and the bush is 12 millimeter. So you need to work this down by a couple of thousands. It must just be nice and uh, slip fit, not too loose and also not too tight. Right, so what I've done is I've just uh, taken an M8 bolt because the hole is M8. And I'm just going to make my own plan for sanding this down on the drill machine. So everything very simple, you should have most of these things. We call this a Buddha plant. Right, so you can just work this down slightly. So use logic, don't uh, clean it for too long. Um, do a little bit at a time, measure, a little bit at a time, measure. A vernier might be a good idea. So use a vernier that will help. I don't have a vernier here at the moment, so I will just use the old conventional method of trial and error. So we're nearly there. Okay, so my homemade emery tape plan has worked. Let's see if it will fit. So if this fits, I'm going to be doing with the other three bushes exactly the same. And uh, we'll bring you guys back as uh, we start the installation of the cabane uh, and then the shocks itself. So let's see if it fits. Perfect. So it's nice and it's not too loose. No play. All good. Okay hey guys, so you see I've got two washers in the front of the cabane. This is at the top attachment and one in the back. Um, this is to make up the space because the cabane is a little bit smaller than the landing gear attachment and these are parallel so we need to make up the space. Okay guys, so the first thing you're going to be removing the rod end 
uh, this is adjustable the minimum distance you need here is 20 millimeters so that's about three quarters of an inch um, just a little bit more than three quarters so we're gonna start with one inch so I've got a vernier set up at one inch and we're just gonna measure right from the edge here one inch in and just keep that in the same position you're gonna be installing the rod end and then we're gonna be locking it in this position this is a 19 millimeter uh, wrench that you're gonna be uh, using we've cleared the cleaned the bushes and they fit nicely put one washer in the front and one in the back and we're just going to drop it into position just a quick overview of what we did with the rims I uh, took them apart, uh, you don't need to remove these three because they are not threaded into the other side. Right, as you can see there are lots of machining faults on these rims, they come like this from Matco. So what we do is we, um, if, if the grooves are quite deep, I'll take a little bit of sandpaper and even maybe a very very uh, smooth file or a, a fine file. And I'll just work it off a little bit and then we'll smooth it out again uh, to get these grooves as shallow as possible because your o-ring will be sitting there and uh, if it's uh, there's a groove it will be leaking so that's why we'll also be using the uh, rubber grease to seal it properly so as you can see I've hooked the o-ring around the valve and once this is done we will put it on the tire and then uh, we're gonna reassemble it and then we'll go through the other process of how to actually hook the tire on the rim and then uh, we'll pump it up okay guys so I've gone ahead and I've reassembled the uh, rims and as you can see the o-ring is still hooked in the position above the uh, valve as I explained before so I'm going to take red rubber grease and I'm just going to run this is a messy job so I'm just going to run it with my finger in the slot where the o-ring will be sealing and that will help seal this permanently okay so I've made sure that I've covered all areas here with a little bit of grease I'm just going to unhook the rubber and it's sitting on the top again and I'm just going to take a little bit more grease and I'm just going to run a little bit more grease on top just to make sure it seals properly and then uh, we'll reef or we'll fit the, the tire Okay guys, as I said in the beginning, I'm doing things as if I'm building like a home builder at my house. So with a lot of effort, we've uh, what we did, we put grease on the side of the rim, on the other side, and we have three chairs here. We pushed it down, two of us, me and my son, or my son and I, and uh, we managed the one side to click in. So now on the second side, I'm just going to push it down once again between the the chairs I have here and then I will be putting some air in it so I'm just going to push it down and try and get it to seal a little bit I must be pumped 0.5 bar so I'll do it with a proper gauge this is not a very reliable gauge but for now I'm just going to do that plus minus 25 uh, approximately 
It looks like about 8 psi. Okay, as preparation for your axle installation, you will note that the axles come with two uh, smaller and two larger holes. The larger holes will fit at the bottom, that's where the most tension will be uh, when it's load bearing. So these are, as I said before, imperial sizes, so this is approximately a 9.5 millimeter hole. Um, for some reason, the smaller holes are actually M8 and they do fit in there, so no work required. But the M10 side of it, this is about 9.6 I would guess. And we have to run an M10 drill bit through this just to open up uh, the hole a little bit. And that it can fit on this side. So, do get yourself a proper sharp M10 drill and then open up these holes. And you can do that before, you can also use your drill bit to clean the, your paint. Um, and so that the bolts will fit nice and easy, otherwise you will be struggling to line things up. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've installed the axles and the brake plate um, in this manner. This is for the 27.5 uh, inch uh, tires from Aero Classic. I would recommend that the brake plate, the one where the calipers will slide in and out of, uh, be drilled by an engineering place. As you can see, these bearings are not greased, so just make sure to pack them, uh, pack them nicely with grease. There's a specific method, just go uh, search on YouTube. There will be some uh, tutorials on how to pack a bearing. But basically, you're going to have some grease on a sheet, and then you're just going to squeeze it in, like this. And then you're going to be turning it. Make sure the grease is going through all the bearings. Don't put excessive grease on. This is not... Uh, like a trailer that will be the wheels will be turning all the time so don't put excessive grease on there it's just a collector of dust